Hello and welcome to Ani Short Stories. I hope you enjoy this story. I'm going to try and upload a new story each day. The Haunted Attic The rain lashed at the windows of the old Victorian house on the Isle of Wight. It was Holly Arnold's dream to own a house like this, a piece of history complete with creaky floorboards, tall, narrow windows, and, most exciting of all, an attic filled with the promise of forgotten treasures. After months of hard work, Holly and her family had finally finished moving in, and they were ready to explore every inch of their new home. Mom, can we look in the attic now? Her son, Leo, asked, tugging at her sleeve. All right, all right, Holly said with a grin. She had been waiting for this moment, too. Together with her husband, Tom, and Leo, they climbed the narrow staircase to the attic. It was dusty and dimly lit, with only a single bulb swinging from the low ceiling. Cobwebs clung to the rafters, and the faint smell of mildew filled the air. The attic was a treasure trove of old furniture, forgotten trunks, and dusty boxes. But it was a single, large trunk in the far corner that caught Holly's eye. It was heavy, with iron hinges and a lock that looked as if it hadn't been touched in decades. Oddly, the lock was broken, and the lid sat slightly ajar. Mom, there's something inside, Leo whispered, his eyes wide with curiosity. Holly knelt beside the trunk and carefully lifted the lid. Inside were items that seemed out of place, as though they belonged to another era. An old, moth-eaten wedding dress lay atop a layer of yellowed papers and cracked leather-bound books. A silver hand mirror, its surface tarnish, caught Holly's reflection in a way that made her shiver. These must have belonged to the previous owner, she murmured, gently lifting the dress. Beneath it was a photograph of a young woman, her face hauntingly beautiful, yet her eyes were hollow, as if she had seen things no one should ever see. Scribbled on the back of the photo was a name, Clara Hartwell. Clara, was she the one who lived here before? Tom asked, frowning as he glanced over her shoulder. Holly had heard rumors about the house's history. People had spoken in hushed tones about the woman who died here under mysterious circumstances, but no one knew the full story. Intrigued, Holly lifted another item, a small, letter-bound diary. Let's take this downstairs, she said. We can read it in better light. They gathered around the kitchen table as Holly opened the diary. The entries were scrawled in fading ink, written in a hurried, shaky hand. The first few pages were ordinary mentions of daily chores, family gatherings, and dreams of the future. But as Holly turned the pages, the entries grew darker, more erratic. March 14, 1897, I hear footsteps at night. They are coming from the attic. Tom says it's just the wind, but I know the sound of footsteps when I hear them. April 3, 1897, they grow louder each night. Sometimes I hear whispering, but I cannot make out the words. I feel watched, as if something lurks in the shadows. May 12, 1897, I found an old mirror in the attic. It shows strange things, not just my face, but someone else's. A woman with eyes as dark as coal, her face twisted in anger. I fear she wants something from me. Holly felt a chill run down her spine as she read. She remembered the mirror they had found in the trunk. Was it the same one? As night fell, the house grew really quiet, and Holly found herself unable to sleep. The stories in the diary had unsettled her, and she kept hearing faint sounds above the creak of footsteps, a distant, muffled whisper. She knew it was likely her imagination, but she felt a pull, a compulsion to go back to the attic. Without waking her family, she crept upstairs, flashlight in hand. The attic seemed darker, more foreboding than it had before. As she entered, her eyes fell on the mirror line beside the trunk. She picked it up and held it at arm's length, hesitating before looking into it. In the dim reflection, her own face stared back, but something was wrong. The eyes that looked at her were not hers, they were cold, empty, filled with a terrible anger. And behind her, barely visible, was the outline of a woman dressed in black, her mouth twisted into a sneer. Holly whipped around, but there was no one there. She turned back to the mirror, but this time, it showed only her own reflection. A sudden creak came from the corner of the attic, and Holly saw the lid of the trunk slowly lifting. Heart pounding, she backed away, but her gaze was fixed on the open trunk. Out of it, rising slowly, was a figure in a tattered black dress, her face pale, eyes burning with a dark fire. Holly a voice whispered, cold as ice, cutting through the silence. 
you found my things you disturbed my rest now you will suffer it as i did the figure moved toward her a spectral hand reaching out holly tried to scream but her voice caught in her throat she stumbled backward her back hitting the wall as the figure came closer filling the room with an overpowering scent of decay mom are you up here leo's voice broke the silence pulling holly back from the edge of terror she blinked and the figure was gone the attic was empty silent once more trembling she turned to her son who was looking at her with wide confused eyes leo we shouldn't be here she managed to say pulling him close together they hurried down the stairs and back to the safety of the kitchen in the days that followed holly couldn't shake the feeling that she was being watched the footsteps continued at night and she often caught glimpses of a dark figure in the corners of her vision each time she looked it would vanish leaving her feeling colder and more afraid one evening desperate for answers holly decided to visit the local historical society to learn more about clara hartwell the records confirmed what she feared clara had lived in the house until her mysterious death in eighteen ninety seven neighbors claimed she had gone mad obsessed with the idea that she was being haunted by a ghostly figure in her mirror but there was one detail that stood out the official cause of death was suicide but locals believed otherwise clara had been found in the attic a look of sheer terror frozen on her face clutching the very mirror holly now had holly returned home with a plan she gathered the items from the trunk and took them into the woods away from the house there, under the cover of night, she buried them, hoping that this would finally put Clara's spirit to rest. But as she returned to the house, she noticed a faint figure standing in the attic window, watching her with those cold, hollow eyes. The whispers began again, and Holly knew the truth. Clara's spirit had attached itself to her, and there would be no escape. The footsteps continued, night after night, following Holly wherever she went, a haunting reminder that some spirits never leave and in the attic the mirror remained waiting for its next unsuspecting victim holly tried to resume her life convincing herself that the burial would somehow bring peace but the house felt heavier now filled with a stifling presence that seemed to watch her every move leo's once joyful laughter grew rare and even tom ever the skeptic seemed tense waking often in the night to strange noises they could never trace one evening a storm rolled in filling the sky with crackling thunder and shadows that stretched across the walls like skeletal fingers holly awoke to a faint rhythmic thumping coming from above it was subtle at first almost easy to dismiss as the groaning of the old house in the wind but as she lay still the noise grew louder more insistent until she could feel it vibrating in her chest a slow sinister heartbeat coming from the attic Unable to ignore it, she slipped out of bed, grabbed the flashlight, and crept up the stairs. The rest of the house was dark and still, her family lost in uneasy sleep. As she reached the attic door, the air around her grew thick, pressing against her chest, as if trying to keep her from going further. But something else pulled her forward, a compulsion she couldn't resist. The attic door creaked open, and Holly's flashlight flickered, casting eerie shadows along the walls. The thumping had stopped, replaced by a chilling silence. She scanned the room, her light landing on the trunk she had emptied and buried, its lid now closed. She froze, she hadn't touched it since she had removed Clara's belongings. As she approached, the trunk gave a groan and began to creak open on its own. Holly held her breath, stirring in horror as a pale, delicate hand emerged, gripping the edge of the trunk. Clara's figure rose from within, her black dress torn and fluttering, her face a ghastly mask of pain and rage. You thought you could get rid of me? Clara whispered, her voice a venomous hiss. This house is mine, I suffered here, and so shall you. Holly stumbled back, trying to escape, but Clara's form seemed to grow, filling the attic, her spectral hand stretching toward Holly with impossible length. She felt her own limbs weaken, as if Clara's presence was draining her strength being on her fear. Desperate, Holly managed a strangled whisper. Why, why are you still here? Clara's expression twisted, a mix of sorrow and fury. Betrayed, forgotten, they locked me up here when I wouldn't stop talking about the ghost in the mirror. They said I was mad. They left me to rot alone, in the darkness. Now, I'm bound to this place, and I'll make sure no one else forgets me. The flashlight flickered again and went dark. 
In a pitch black of the attic, Holly felt Clara's cold fingers brush her cheek, a sensation like ice crawling over her skin. She screamed, lurching backward, but Clara was relentless, her form closing in, whispering curses and threats. Just as Holly thought she might faint, a blinding flash of lightning filled the attic, illuminating the space in a sudden, brilliant light. In a split second of clarity, Holly spotted the mirror lying on the floor, Clara's twisted reflection glaring back at her. Desperate for some kind of power over the spirit, she sees the mirror, clutching it with both hands. You're trapped in here, aren't you? Holly gasped. It's the mirror. That's why you can't leave, Clara recoiled, her form flickering, her face contorted with terror. Holly didn't hesitate. She held the mirror to the floor with all her strength. It shattered into a thousand pieces, each shard catching a bit of Clara's face, her twisted form splintering and fracturing in every direction. Ah! Clara's scream was deafening, her figure dissolving, torn apart into wisps of shadow and mist. One by one, the pieces vanish, leaving nothing but silence in the attic. Holly slumped against the wall, gasping, her heart pounding. She couldn't believe it was over, but the air felt different, lighter, as if a weight had been lifted. For the first time since they'd moved in, the house felt truly empty. In the days that followed, Holly began to heal, finding peace in the quiet of her home. The footsteps had stopped and the cold presence was gone. Yet sometimes, in the corners of her mind, she thought she could feel a sliver of Clara's rage lingering, a reminder of the terror she had endured. Then, one morning, as Holly swept the attic clean, a glint caught her eye a small, forgotten shard of the mirror wedged between the floorboards. She picked it up, watching as her reflection shifted slightly, her face momentarily replaced by Clara's vengeful eyes. Holly dropped it, shivering, and left the attic, deciding that some things were best left buried. And so the house stood, silent but waiting, a fragment of Clara's spirit hidden within, biding its time for the next soul to wander too close to reach into the past and to awaken the haunted memory that could never fully die. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this story. Please don't forget to like and even better like and subscribe. Thank you very much and I hope you have had or have a great day.